All right, guys, it has been a minute since I've made a Splinterlands video, and I am sorry about that for the fans. I've still been doing my live streams, but I'm going to be doing a lot more big time live streams. Hopefully some of you give that a chance because it's free to play if you're into games. But I understand how Splinterlands can just be played on the phone, so not all of my friends are into that. So today we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be going over... Hold on here. Let me just make sure my auto video doesn't start there. We're going to be going over the Baron's Bounty cards and what I think of them and telling you about a group sale opportunity that I'm offering anybody that wants to pick up some copies of these cards and have a better chance of getting some cash back. Obviously, if you go with the group sale option, you have to trust me and you have to understand that you won't have that chance to hit the lotto and make a lot of money. And I'll go over that a little bit at the end. Okay, so we all know the Baron Bounty at this point, if you're a Splinterlands player. We've got two new cards with Having coming into the game. We got everyone's favorite here, which is Baron Fiat. Baron Fiat is very interesting because he's a scattershot Having character. He's on Death and Fire. So the one thing about him, he's not part of the major meta right now, which is Dragon with um, blue or white with Grim Bardoon in the front. However, we do have the new Grim Bardoon uh, kind of killer coming into the game, so there could be some more interesting metas. I will admit his one weakness is fire and death. It does not currently seem to be all that meta. Dragon death and dragon fire are not all that meta. And he has Scattershot, the one team that does sometimes come into play with some meta right now is the Yossic team where your whole team scatter shots well then a monster with scatter shot kind of you wish he had a different ability um that's the one weakness to this card however i don't think anybody can know for sure how impactful a team that can half the entire back row can be um this is why i think he's still going to be a card that you're going to want to have in your deck this is why I am planning to buy a max copy of this card. Then we go ahead and go into the, hench the Henchling Enforcer. Now this card does not scream as meta when you first look at it. Why? Well, it attacks the first position. We already have a having card that attacks the first position. We actually have two in the Salty Bear and the Gladiator card from the death team there's another little uh, four drop epic he can get having at higher levels so you got having already in the game already targeting the same position that this guy can target however if you don't have those cards this is an interesting card to add to your team the other thing he is part of the life and water meta both of those with grim bardoon are very interesting because now you can have a card when grim bardoon is taking to add having to that first position card now the one bad thing about having the first position card that has been talked about quite frequently doesn't do anything if you're doing a Grim Bardoon versus Grim Bardoon and it also doesn't do anything if you have any of the other uh, immune tanks up in the front so this you know is a, a kind of interesting on that front and the other thing it doesn't quite do great is that it um can that that position can be cleansed so you run into immunities, you run into cleanse, and then you run into monsters who are just tanking like Bajira or Grimbardoon. They might not even have an attack and his card is wasted. But why is he maybe still something interesting to add to your deck? Well, there's not a lot of true strike monsters right now and he is a true strike monster in silver and because there is no level caps anymore and you can use this card at anywhere, he's not a terrible card to have at level four. You get True Strike, you get Having, you get a solid three damage, which is not bad for an Archer card. It's not great for this six, but he only goes up to four and you have to, you have to get, you know, 80 more copies of him. So it's kind of an interesting, you know, you know feel here. Um, one of the things that I, I noticed here that is kind of confusing, and I don't know if they'll correct this, there is no improvement from level four to level five in stats. So I don't know what's going on here. You don't pick up anything, but then on level six, you pick up an, a speed and an armor. So I wonder if there's gonna be a little adjustment to this. I, I hate it when you see three to three, three to three, one to one, four to four. Um, the only, you know, 
I, I don't even know <laughs> why you would want a level five. So it looks like right now the interesting spots to target are either a level four or a level six unless you really like the idea of the camouflage plays. Now this is a meta that not a lot of people pay attention to but there is a couple different kind of decks where you can make a Grim Bardoon um, healer deck with using camouflage monsters in the back so that you can you, you know the, the one thing is there isn't really camouflage healers but you can make a kind of interesting team where you force them to attack your front row monsters just because you have a lot of camouflage in the back or you use camouflage with martyr and so you put martyrs in certain positions with camouflage monsters around them that you make them fight those martyr monsters and then this guy can get kind of big and start to hit hard so that's a very interesting thing. Uh, again, I don't see a lot of reason to get him up to level 7. If you're going to go that far, you might as well take him to the max level. Um, overall, I would say this card for most people is going to be good enough at level 4 to play in their deck. And some people might want the camouflage stuff. Or some people who want to play it in their decks in the higher levels will take it to at least level 6. Because at level 6 they get that extra armor and that extra speed. Uh, armor and speed matter. So I, I feel like that makes a lot more sense to pay that extra little bit of money. Now let's talk about the cost of these cards now that we've broken them down. Okay, they're, they're expensive, but they're not that expensive if you look at vouchers. So, really quickly, let me go over here to Tribal Decks and let's look at the price of vouchers. Tokens. Voucher. Okay, a voucher is right now three cents. So when I bring over my little cheat sheet here, we've got right now the Henchling Enforcer. He's 3,000... Um, 125 DEC, the new amount of Bitcoin you'll be getting after the halving. So basically $3 and $3 and 12, <laughs> or wait, no, yeah, $3 and 12.5 cents per copy. That seems kind of a lot, but you can get him for $1 and 62 cents and $1 one dollar fifty six point two five cents or or one thousand five hundred sixty two dec and 31 vouchers we bust out our our fast our calculator here you look at 31.25 vouchers times three cents because they're at 2.9 that's a whole um do 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 that does not look right i had to have messed up oh i divided by it's like that number is not right <laughs> I'm glad I did that off screen. So 31.25, so you can times that by three cents. That's 93 cents, making it instead of three dollars, just over just under two dollars and fifty cents, about two dollars and forty nine cents per copy of for the card. Now it, it that is still kind of expensive for a rare card, especially when you compare it to the price of current rares on the market. This is where some people are complaining. Why does this card cost so much, right? So if you go into the into the market right now, you even look at Rebellion rares, and you got twenty three cents. Um, you got some of the better. You got summoners at fifty seven cents. The really good cards are two dollars. So wh where is this two dollar and fifty cents price coming from? I understand that comment. I completely understand that complaint. All right. So now now we go back into this. Uh, Baron Fiat is thirty one DEC or thirty one dollars per per card. But again, he you only have to buy eleven of him. Uh, you flip it up to the voucher cost. You got 312 vouchers and 15,000, so about $15.62. You times the 312 vouchers that you would need times the 0.03 cents. That's $9. So you're looking at about $25 per card on the Baron Fiat. So, you, you know, that, that's not spectacular. I've also got these numbers here. They'll be in the description of the video if you want to get in on the sale. So why are these cards so expensive and why still might you want, want to buy them? Well, there's prizes. So we can get into it here. They're going to be doing this thing where if we come in 
and we buy these cards, we get points for each DEC or credit we spend. This does mean that if you overpay and pay 100% DEC, you do get more credits, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that unless you don't know how to get vouchers. So I don't know how many people will go that route. Also, you get more points if you buy the card on the first day they go for sale as opposed to later on. But they're going to be giving away 500 plot tokens, uh, 100 alpha packs, 250 beta packs, some of them tame, some essence orbs, some dice packs, and 20 Rooney NFTs. So the way my group sale would work, we would all come together, we would buy how many that we wanted to buy, any golds that were gotten would be sold, and... Um, that DEC would be saved and given back people back to people based on how many cards they bought. An example is I'm buying 11 cards of the legendary. If you buy one and one of them turns gold, I'm going to sell the gold. I'm going to make sure I get my 11 regulars. You get your, your, one, your one regular. And then I'm going to go, okay, you get one twelfth of the DEC that was made because you bought one twelfth of our chances to get those cards. It, that's the way it would work with just two of us in there. Right now I can tell you that I have myself in this deal and I believe Tails is going to be in it with me. So we're starting off with a buy of, uh, I think, around 20 of the Legendary card. Um, I don't expect either of us to not use the DEC to get them at the cheaper price. I mean the vouchers. So we're looking at a decent amount of tickets. We're willing to let other people who want to come in get in with us on this because the, the way we're going to do it is any golds get sold. Everybody only gets their regular copies. And then any, but any plots, alpha tokens, beta packets, untamed, any of that stuff gets sold and you get some of your DEC back. If we get extremely lucky and pull a Rooney or pull a couple alpha packs or just like a good essence of these, those items can be liquidated and you can get your money back. And now you can look at the price that you spent on those cards as being being lower <laughs> will we win i don't know it's completely random so i can't guarantee you any money back i can't even guarantee you that i'll get a gold foil and be able to get us some money back it's all going to be luck and i know we don't have a lot of time to figure this out i should have made this video as soon as this came out and i had a thought to do this but I basically waited on my live stream. I gave the idea out there to see if people were interested. A few people touched base, so now I'm making a video about it. If you want to get in on this, you need to join my Discord. I'll have a fresh link in my description. And you need to just let me know that you want to be in it and then send me your DEC and vouchers. Again, for each one that you want to buy, you'd have to send over this much DEC and vouchers for a regular one. That's 1,562 and 31 vouchers for each Hendrick you want. And for each Baron Fiat you want, you'd have to send over 15,000 deck and 312 vouchers. I did a sale like this for the Rift Watcher pre-sale. The people who were in it had no problems. I sold all of our airdrop cards now except for two because I just haven't been able to sell those last two. I'm still working on it. I sent out all that DEC like I said I would and I really hope uh, that most of them were happy with that experience. I can't say for sure that everyone was happy with buying as many Rift Watchers as they did, but at least they did get some DEC back uh, from being in our group sale throughout the rest of the airdrops. Okay, now, uh, is there anything else to talk about here? The, they go on sale on Tuesday, and I will be planning to buy them on Tuesday. One other thing, if more people joined our group than I thought, would I have a chance at getting some one of these titles to be able to liquidate? Yes. Also, all of the items that will be liquidated will be offered to the group to buy at current market value. So if these titles are really cheap and you wanted one, you could buy it from the group by sending me the DEC and then you'd even get some of that DEC back. I've known to do this sometimes um, if... if uh, you know, if somebody in the group wants the gold foil, we would look at the current market value, maybe give you the 5% discount to sell it to you directly, things like that. Um, but if we end up somewhere on the leaderboard, we get all these extra prizes that we could sell. So there's titles. Oops. Uh, let me just undo. What did I just do? Oh, I'll just fix it late somehow I erased something on my little clipboard but I'll fix that later 
Um, and if we end up in here, we could get some extra copies of the cards to be able to liquidate to give you more money back. Like I said, I, if there's some big whales that are coming into this expecting to be able to be on these leaderboards and make all this money back, we're probably not going to be there even if a few, even if we buy like 20 or 30 copies. But you never know. You'll be able to know as we get going, but we won't know going into it. But we're going to end it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'm going to be trying to make my Splinterlands videos back Again, I just hope there'll be more good news to cover. Thanks. Bye.